Good morning. Grace and peace be with you on this Sunday after Christmas. It's delightful to be with you on this chilly, cold Sunday morning. My name is Reverend Melanie Marshbaum, and I am one of the ministers here at Community Presbyterian Church. And as with every Sunday, it is a delight to be with you in worship this morning. Whether this is your very first time visiting with us, whether you've been here your whole life long, whether you're back after a long time away, whether you're worshiping online or in person, we are different and special because you are here today and we could not do this without you. This is our Christmas season lessons and carols service this morning. And so in lieu of a sermon, we will be hearing several readings from to this morning's um, seasonal choices for scripture verses with some music in between, hopefully some familiar Christmas carols. And we have some guest readers joining us from the congregation, so listen out for those voices, whether you're seeing them up on the stage or hearing them from the background. We hope that you will enjoy this worship service this morning. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship by going to God in prayer. Holy God, light of the world, you have come to be with us in the flesh, living among us in the person of Jesus. Open our hearts and our minds to what you have to tell us today in your word and in your spirit. Amen. We know that as we walk through this journey of life, we fall, we stumble, but God is always here to help us reach back up again. And so we give thanks for God's amazing mercy and love. As redeemed and reconciled members of the family of God, let us stand where we are or get our um, messages ready online to share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. You may stand and wave, give a peace sign, or any other sign of Christ's peace. And as we are returning to our seats, I just want to give you one small little reminder that today, because we're doing Lessons and Carols, it's the Sunday after Christmas, we are not doing a children's time or dismissing for Sunday school. We hope that if you have any young worshipers with you, that they will stay and be a part of the worship service this morning. And if you need some activities for them to do, there are activities on the back table, and we also have some worship bags in the narthex. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the Lord, for as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown to, be spring, to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings shall see your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that, is the, that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God.
The second reading comes from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let him praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth. Young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Come and do 
Galatians 4, 4 through 7. For when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. I skipped a step. Born under the law in order to redeem those who were born under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, for you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Our fourth reading this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 40, the story of the baptism, the consecration of Jesus. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought the baby up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon had come into the temple that day. And when the parents brought the child to Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, sorry, had brought the child Jesus, not to Jesus, to do what was customary for him under the law. <clears throat> Simeon took him in his arms, and he praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light 
for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about the baby. Then Simeon blessed him and said to his mother, Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet called Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and praying night and day. At that moment, she came and she began to praise God and speak about the child to all who were looking for redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and he became strong and filled with wisdom and the favor of God was upon him. Well, what do you mean, Tommy? <sighs> we've got angels, we've got shepherds, we've got wise men, we've got baptism, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all these things. With, like, nobody can answer us about what Christmas is all about. We, we go all around the circle every year you know, it should just be as easy as, like, taking out our radio and turning it on. Somebody should just tell us the answer. Well, you know, Tommy, that's true. And there are a lot of complicated and confusing stories about the birth of Jesus. And we don't know very much about who he was as a little kid. And some of these stories that we hear throughout the Christmas season try to answer those confusing questions for us. But sometimes it just gets even more confusing. But isn't there just one way to just tell us what Christmas is all about? Well, Tommy, we've got one more story to tell today, and hopefully that one will wrap everything up for us. I hope so. I'm going to turn this on and see if we can I find it. I think if you turn on your radio, you'll be able to hear it. And this is WHOH Radio. That's right. Heard on high radio. Sponsored in part by your fellow congregational members at Community Presbyterian Church in Atlantic Beach, Florida. As we continue our program this evening, I'd like to share something for all of those listening at Community who were wondering what Christmas was really about. That's right. The angels here on Heard on High thought you could use some reminding. Sit back, relax, and hear now the meaning of Christmas. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings, great joy, which will be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And that, my friends, is the meaning of Christmas. All right, all you shepherds of the seashore, this is the head angel of Herd on High signing off. Goodbye and God bless. Get it now. Why couldn't we just say that in the first place? Well, you know, Tommy, people who wrote things long ago, they really like to use a lot of very fancy words. And they like to put things in a lot of explanation. But it all boils down to God loved us so, so much that God became one of us. And at Christmas, we celebrate God's word in human form, Jesus, sharing God's love with the world. 
I think I get it now. Thank you, Pastor Melanie. You're welcome. As we are deep into the um, Christmas season, I want to tell everyone thank you for all the gifts that you did this year for Mission House, for Beam, for the missions that we reached that we that we reached out with because of your support. And again, it's everything that you do that makes the missions and the work and the word of the Lord in this church happen. So we give thanks to you as we give thanks to God as well. Let's go to God in prayer. Again, gracious God, <clears throat> you blessed us in so many ways. And this is a season where we just kind of slow down a little bit and we reflect and we see all the ways that you blessed us. We thank you, O oh God, that we are able to bring to you, back to you, the gifts, our, the gifts of ourselves and everything that, that, that it is, our money, our time, our talents. And we lay them at your feet. We put them in your lap. And we ask that you continue to use them to spread your gospel of peace, love, mercy to all, not only just in this community, but all around the world. And in Christ's name we pray, amen. That's cool. All right. Well, let's continue with an attitude of prayer as we lift up the needs of the people in our community. Um, just a couple of updates, uh, prayers, and we ask for prayers and comfort for Jimmy Mack, or Jimmy Mick, who was entered into hospice and peace, and especially for his loved one, Jackie. Prayers for Nancy F., who was having surgery this week, for, for Mar Maria G., who was recovering from dental work, for Annie L., who was undergoing treatment starting in January for cancer. For Kevin C., who was a brother of Lisa H., who has had some medical problems, some recent medical problems. And for prayers for those in our community who have recently been affected by COVID-19. There are many that are on our prayer list, and we have a prayer list in the back of the church. And if you'd like to know specifically, a little bit more specifically, about some specific names and stuff, you're welcome to either call Melissa or... Um, Email or text her, and she'll let you know, um, you know, in particular. Because I know that sometimes we call out people's names. You go, okay, who is that? If you think you know the person, you'd like to know some things about it, you're welcome to touch base with Melissa, and we can go from there. Um, but again, there's a prayer list in the back that we invite you to take with you um, and uh, continue to lift up these people in prayer. So with that being said, let's go to God and lift them up. Again, oh God, we give you thanks for the gift of your son, Jesus who you're, you gave him to us, and he came, you came to us in human form, and you walked among us. And it's through Jesus, who is a light in the darkness, a healing for all who are sick. He is the Prince of Peace. Even though he was born in a poor place, oh God, he now reigns with you and rules the world as Lord of Lords, as King of Kings. And it's because of your gift that we are able to stand before your throne of grace, stand in your presence, lifting up our loved ones and our concerns. We pray for peace, of the, peace in the world. We pray again for strength for the weak, for those facing medical challenges and cancer, for those who are having surgery or recovering from surgery. For those who are struggling and need, need peace. For those, oh God, who need a strength during this time of year. As sometimes we face the reality that we're missing a loved one. You know, God, we ask for strength and to fill that void that comes only, that, the void that can be filled that comes only from you. Father, there are many that are on our hearts that, aren't, that we have not called out, that you know, oh God, even though as we sit before you, you know what's on our hearts. So in a time of silence, we stand in your presence. And in our whispers and in our silence, we call these names out to you.
Father, be with those who can't be with us today, whether they're serving in the military or first responder, or they're out, be with the folks in Nashville. And now, gracious God, I leave your people in the prayer that Jesus taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we reflect on the Christmas season and all that it brings us, and as we prepare to go out back into the world, let us close out this time of worship with a word of prayer. Holy God, light of the world, we have celebrated Christmas with Mary and Joseph. We have rejoiced with the angels and the shepherds. We have celebrated the birth of Christ Jesus, your living presence. O oh God, you came to live among us, caring, loving, and healing us. Make us now your arms, your hands, your feet. Use us to care for your people. Surround us with your peace today and always. Guide us as we journey through this life, and as we live according to your word, May your light shine bright in the midst of our darkness. Lord Jesus, be with us today and always. Amen. As you go from this place, know that the love of God goes with you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is here to comfort you, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit surrounds you and connects you now and always. Amen. Thank you.